Hey everybody, welcome to Lose Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm Tyler. And I'm Steve. And I'm Josh. That's the best one we've ever done. Uh, awesome, Perfect guys. Voice. Time for Second us to best. stop. No, nope. That took too long. <laughs> <laughs> it's long. We're on a timer today, guys. Let me, pull, let me put my watch on. I've already got it started, boys. I'm gonna. We got 49 best minutes. Let's I do can it. to make him late. <laughs> Just to be a bitch about it. All right. Welcome to Linux Cast. We talk about Linuxy things. That's what we do. And like I said, like uh, you guys said, we are apparently on a clock, but uh, that's never stopped us before. So, mm -hmm. welcome to everybody who is watching us live. You can do so every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. We always start around that time. It's never too late. We never, I don't think we ever start early. <laughs> if we ever start early, <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, but you can head on over to the Linux Cast uh, uh, YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash LinuxCast, and that's where you'll find the live show. And can't catch us live, we do pull the live stream down right immediately after. I, I didn't last week, but I'm going to stick with that because it did it just not work. But the edited version will go up afterwards, and you guys can catch there. They'll have timestamps and be edited and pretty and all that stuff. Also, you can find the audio version somewhere. So, uh, now that all that housekeeping is out of the way, if you're watching us live, leave a thumbs up. It would really help the channel. All right. So, before we jump into the main topic, which is Steve's this week, we're going to do a lightning round of what we've done this week in open source. So, Tyler, quickly, what have you been up to this week in open source? Other than failing at every single distro people have paid you to try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, look, I can't gloss over it, but I'll be quick. Okay. I was paid exorbitant amounts of money by a couple of members of my community to check out Open Man Treva. And then Open Man Treva would not work. And I'm not going to get into the, any of the details because it doesn't matter because people will argue and bicker over like whether or not I should have fixed it or whatever. But that didn't work. I tried Magia because it is you know, in the same vein as Open Mandriva. That one had just the worst mirrors I have ever seen in my entire life, and they didn't even function for me, even though they were technically supposed to be available and up and running, but whatever. So couldn't get that running. Then I install OpenSUSE Leap, which literally, uh, can, can, I just, can I just say this for a second? When you go to OpenSUSE's website, they don't tell you that they're discontinuing Leap. If they do, it was, it's not in like big, bold letters like, hey, by the way, dumbass, don't download this. It's it's, it's literally gone. It's not, it, we're not focusing on it at all. So it broke 58% during the install, just stopped hung for forever i literally kept it running for like an hour and a half it did nothing it was completely frozen so then the next morning i try installing open a tumbleweed and the installer tells me that the net install is missing something even though it pulls it down from the internet I I don't know. It, it it gave me an in curses screen, which I didn't think it was even supposed to be in curses, but told me the installer was broken. Uh, I tried redoing the installer with a different, you know, uh, USB maker. I think I used DD the first time, then I used Belina Etcher. Did the same thing. So, yeah, uh, I'm on Arch. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> That's about it. All right. Skill issue. Thief, <laughs> what have you been up to this week in open source? All right. This is going to be a quick one. I've been working on Zero Linux. And the other thing, will be it's going to be the part of the, uh, today's subject. So I'm not going to mention it here. So I'm just going to say, been working on Zero Linux, ironing things out. And Calamaris got updated, so I had to figure things out there. And that's it. Doesn't Done. Calamaris get updated like every week? It gets updated every hour of every day, but those are <laughs> but no. But those are those are development updates, not like, final like, updates. Gotcha. Yeah. So I, but I, I used to dirty build Calamares, meaning that I used to build with against every commit that gets pushed every day. But now <laughs> I don't do that anymore because I learned that the hard way. You do that, you're gonna hit wall. Yeah. Good luck recovering. <laughs> So I stopped doing that. Now we're at Calamaris 3.3 Alpha 6. All right, Josh, what have you been up to? I haven't been doing anything with open source this week other than, you know, testing out Red Hat kernels for them. But instead, I've actually been delving into another realm of my of my bad hobbies, 
and I have discovered the the newfound talent of painting miniatures for uh, war games. So I've got this little dwarf right here. I've got this uh, little barbarian guy that I may, that I might have used a little bit too much wash on, so he looks extremely dirty. And then I've got this little dragon uh, that I spent way too much time trying to make sure that you know he's got a nice red on him because I uh, over thinned my paint just a little bit too much. He's got like five layers of red on him right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a verified nerd right there, guys. I don't know if you guys well, said see, like, <laughs> here's my thing. I was going I, I, I was going to joke about it at first, and then he pulled out that dragon, and I was like, okay, that looks pretty no, sick. No, no, you guys thought that I was, I was saying nerd isn't a bad thing. That was nerd isn't awesome. <laughs> I, my, my next ones is going to be these Necron warriors that I, that I picked up. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Put that closer to the camera, dude. Oh, this one? Yeah, that camera focus please wait okay. hold on are you are you 3d printing all of these no i actually have a friend that's that's 3d printing so he 3d printed this one and uh he actually 3d printed five different ones for me let's see this is actually pretty cool wait hold on and you, and you're just painting them or like are y'all yeah like, i'm painting them but like uh, are y'all these... giving them back and forth between each other like you paint and keep some he and he and he gets some yeah pretty much but that's pretty basically, cool basically what these are so I don't play Warhammer specifically. I play One Page Rules, which is a variant rule set that you can use uh, Warhammer miniatures for. And uh, they have their own line of miniatures. That's what these guys are. These are Robot Legion guys. And the benefit that One Page Rules gives is that they is that they will actually sell you STL files for 3D printers. You know, me being the fancy business owner and everything, I might have sent them an email going like, hey, I can, I can make a mold for you guys. That way, you know, we can get some actual durable minis. Uh, they haven't Ooh. responded yet. I'm just That'd trying to be make a sale. Cool. Just trying to make a sale. Well, hey, <laughs> hey, dude, this sounds like a good idea. All right. So I wrote a Python program. So I, as I, t I think I talked about it last week, where I was told you guys I was getting into a little bit of retro gaming. So I wrote a Python script. So there's a a Reddit thr mega thread on r slash roms of literally every conceivable retro game and even non-retro game that you could want and you could just go download them obviously uh, various legal questions aside i wrote a python script that would go to that mega thread and download every one for a given console so i downloaded <laughs> gigabytes upon gigabytes of games that i will never ever play because i mean there's like i i, I don't know they, i downloaded all the game boy and game boy color ones to begin with and there's like i don't know probably how much data are we talking about? Uh, the, the game, the Game Boy and Game Boy Colors, was about two gigabytes in total. Okay. And it was like over a thousand games. So they're they're all only about like a four, five, six kilobytes a piece. To be honest with you, they're not not very big. Now I was looking into downloading like all the PS3 games or the PS2 games, and some of those are gigabytes in size. And that that was beyond my data cap limits, so I couldn't do that. I wanted to, but I didn't. But anyways, that's what I did. Is I wrote when I'm, honestly, it's one of my first complex Python scripts that I've written on my own, and I was pretty damn proud of it because it actually worked. So there, I'm learning Python and actually have a script to show for it. I didn't actually share it with anybody because I don't want. <laughs> I think I've I've skirted the legalities of that quite enough. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it, anyways, that's what I did this week. So. That's uh, our week in open source and and uh, D and D and whatever Josh is doing. You can tell I'm not really a, a true nerd. I don't, I don't know any of that stuff. Anyways, Steve, you had the the topic this week. So, my friend, what are we talking about? Something you are going to love this week. We are going to be talking about containers. The power of containers. I, I love I love that most of your body language right now comes from like someone at a revival having way too good of a time. Because <laughs> I am having a lot. I'm having such a great time. The container, the the container's ghost is speaking to you right now. I feel it. I yes. feel it. Preach, brother. Steve is high on containers. Preach. You can blame you can blame Matt for this. This is your brain. My love containers. for containers is is all on Matt. I'll take the blame for I that. I was like, uh, distro box. I'm on Arch. I don't need no stinking distro box. I need something better. So I started hunting and hunting and hunting. And I discovered something called Casa OS. 
because I wanted something I can install on my system without having to reinstall my system. Like I didn't want something that managed containers as an OS that I had to install. So I installed Casa OS. I talked about it last week as my thing of the week. I kept digging into it. And the more I dug into it, the more I fell in love with it. Now, it has a caveat. It's a major caveat to those who care. I don't care, so it's not a caveat for me. So the caveat of Casa OS is that it's HTTP and they do not have plans for HTTPS. So if you want to deploy it on something on your actual server, don't do it. Don't use Casa OS. You're some, you're something similar, which is my thingy of the week. I'll talk about it later. For me, my, my server is physically off. So me no care. Me no like, give like rats you mean offline. You mean offline. Like it's just on your local network. No, yeah, it's offline and it's physically off because we turn off the power after midnight. <laughs> oh, you mean like when you're not using it? Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. and when I'm not using it, so we don't pay extra for, for, for the electricity bill. But so I don't care HTTP or HTTPS. I don't care. The only the only problem, uh, the only time where that came in, uh, became a problem is with Vault Warden or Bitwarden because Bitwarden requires HTTPS. Since it encrypts everything, so so uh, some containers probably won't work. But uh, uh, I mean, uh, quite a few, <laughs> quite a few. But not the. I don't care. I I just went back to normal Bitwarden hosted online, whatever. But I cannot stress this enough. I have comic books, I have audio books, I have music, and I use containers to organize all that. I use. I tried Calibre. Calibre is the way they did the container is via Chasm. And Chasm is just a remote desktop kind of thing. I don't like it. So I didn't like Calibre, the Calibre container. I like Calibre itself, but I just don't like the way they did the container. I'm using uh, something called audio. Uh, I'm using something called. Wait, hold on. Steve, didn't you set up your, your virtual camera before? The started. You couldn't get it working. Couldn't get it working. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hey. Can I share my screen, Matt? Can you switch to so mm. I can show? Give me a second. <laughs> Matt's like, oh god, here goes my transforms. Good lord. That's exactly how what's happening. And you know what? I'm glad that, as usual, Steve is taking the longest, and that's why we're going to be. That's why he's going to be late today. <laughs> you can't to even blame podcast. us. Uh, all right, yep. Steve, go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, he brought it up. Come on, Dev. It's <laughs> always Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's his topic now. You can't you can't use that against him. Come on, man. Okay, I'm trying to share right now. It's spinning, spinning, spinning. Yeah, it takes a minute to buffer because you know you happen to be in Lebanon. Okay, now it's working. All right, all right. Yeah, that's, a, that's a nice four by three screen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want, I can make it uh, there wider. You go. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm using a stump for my for my comic books. So I just log in. And you got my comic books. I really, 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 really love this. Like, for example, I have this one, Alix. It's a, it's a comic book I used to read when I was younger. So you got all the volumes, multiple pages of volumes. So it organize, I can organize all my comic books, and I have a lot of them, <laughs> comic book series. So that, that program is a container that is installed through Casa inside Casa OS, yeah, I pulled this container from Linux server, and the best part is, is when you click install and you don't find the application you want within this extremely long list, they have a log list, and you can add sorted third-party sources in here. You just add source; it's uh, like a repository, basically. Have you tried using Jellyfin? Because I, I always have problems with Jellyfin. Yeah, Jellyfin. Jellyfin, Jellyfin. I don't. Jellyfin I don't sports. have a use for it. I have Plex. So, uh, Josh, what were you saying? So Jellyfin does support audiobooks, comic books, and all yeah, I know, books. I know. I just don't want. I don't like to mix everything in a single app. I'm that kind of person. That makes sense. But yeah, uh, so right, that's your preference. Yeah. So what I wanted to say is, you can just click custom install. You go to, for example, you go, you go here, explore. You find a container you want. So let's say Nginx. I think that's Nginx, right? <laughs> Nginx, whatever. Well, it depends Nginx. on who Nginx. you ask, but yeah. if it helps any, the developers call it Nginx. Really? Yeah. So, see what... so ah. yep, Nginx is a community name. 
Well, I've learned so something new today. You, you take the image name, you just copy it, and you start building here. You call it whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. You, you paste the image name here. Oh, sorry. You need to paste the actual URL. Ah, here. Pull Nginx latest here. Okay, well, you get the idea. Nginx, put it here. Oh, I don't know how to paste. Okay, you remove that. Nginx latest, and then you give it an icon. You give it a uh, you give it the IP address or your virtual domain and ports, and you give it any settings that are indicated in the uh, instructions over here, and then you got yourself a container. So it's basically like a portainer. Think about it like portainer stacks, but you do it custom here. Like I have portainer here because I like uh, portainer. Click OK. So I have 13 stacks because, you know, I need them. So this is how you, you do it. You can do it either via Portainer or you can do it directly via uh, Casa OS. If you do it via Portainer, they will show as unknown containers. You have to convert them to, and redeploy them. So Casa OS understand them. But it's the same thing. So what I want to show you guys, and it's going to blow some people's minds, is when I click this one, it's Arch Linux inside a container, inside my browser. I, I was waiting to see the zero Linux. It's not <laughs> zero. <laughs> it's not zero Linux. It's just Arch Linux with is that zero... what zero Linux is? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I that's what we call checkmate. <laughs> yeah, checkmate. <laughs> well, uh, uh, it's 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 freaking. You can run operating desk, full desktop operating systems inside your browser and they're hosted on your machine. They're not hosted somewhere online you have no control over. You have full control over this. So you have Fedora, you have Ubuntu, you have Arch, you have various, of course, various implementations like uh, one with GNOME, one with KDE, one, you know. So I chose Arch because Arch. So, and this is just a container. And I organize my music with this one. I'm like, okay, Wizard of Oz. Okay. <laughs> it landed on my movie soundtracks. Xanadu. Okay. <laughs> oh, you have but the you Metropolis get... soundtrack? You're. That's awesome. This is the original. This is the original one, not the remade one by... Uh, well, no, I, the, I assumed uh, that it was the original one, given the artwork. Um, yeah, it's yeah, not it's the cool. one by Vangelis. It's not the one by Vangelis. No. But anyway. Uh, cool. th <laughs> Sorry. Music nerd here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and this is the best since part. I since i uh, seen Metropolis. It's been a while since a lot of people I love that. I, lo I, lo I love this film. So. Why is it only showing these? Ah, library. So these are my audiobooks for Isaac Asimov. <laughs> Just have everything. It, yeah, I have every single one. And if you want to look at the Star Wars one, 148. Okay, that's just that's just wrong. Star Trek all the way, bro. Um, See, I mean, yeah, like well, this I, does go. This does go to show, like how much you can do with containers. But the biggest problem, the biggest problem with people arguing against containers nowadays is people. People are doing this thing with containers now, where like it would be kind of like if you went back like a hundred years ago and you gave like some like random dude in the middle of nowhere a flamethrower. Like at first, he's going to be like having so much fun that when he goes to make his steak later that night, he's going to use the flamethrower instead of the you know oven or a you know like a, a skillet. It like, goes you know? with it, it. It goes to with every piece of software. All right, Steve, can you stop st streaming your podcast so I can get the or the screen so I can show <laughs> everything back where it was? Thank you. Your podcast. All right, My say goodness, what you're going to say, I Josh. I tried to get him. To, I tried to get him to go longer because you know we're only. He's got half an hour, and he, he yeah. hasn't even let anybody I, else. I, talk I just yet. looked at the clock. I just literally looked at the <laughs> clock, and I need to hurry with this one. Uh, this was just scratching the surface. I have pie hole, as you saw. Uh, if you didn't, if you missed it, just go back a little bit, and you will see it. I have pie hole, and I got and when uh, this comes exactly to the point that that Zany brought up. You give anyone something, th they might find 
bad ways to use it. For example, I found questionable containers. I'm, I'm testing them, but, and they work, and I like them, but they're questionable. Like, for example, the first example is Vault Warden. Vault Warden is a fork of Bitwarden that you can run locally as a container, but it unlocks premium features without you paying of Bitwarden. This is gray area. I don't know what it is considered. Piracy, That's, whatever. It's not piracy at all. It's completely legal. But And Bitwarden knows about Vault Warden. Like, they are contributors to it. Oh, okay. What about MeTube, where you can do something in YouTube that is not allowed? Well, technically, that one is gray area. Yeah, and SpotDL, where you can do the same thing on Spotify. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't think that was, like... that. That wasn't my point that I was making. Like my point is that right now, like a lot of a lot of the great things that containers can do is kind of being muddied by the fact that there are also people out there who want to make literally anything and everything a container. Like like I mean, look, being able to have containers that, you know, manage other stuff and are able to be like, you know, used inside of a server and be able to like you know, be accessed anywhere. That's cool. But also having like, I don't know, nano be a snap or a container is a why like that serves I, I, no exactly. purpose. Uh, to, to, to illustrate your point, if you go to the Linux server, you will see containers that shouldn't exist. Like I showed you a lot. on the, uh, like I showed you on the, on the podcast episode on the on the geeks episode that you lost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, he lost it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, like I showed you, there's the entire T of the freaking Amazon CDN. If you combine all the containers that exist for Amazon, you can have your you can fork the the freaking if you had the hardware, uh, you can fork the the damn Amazon CDNs and everything, <laughs> WS and stuff. I remember you scrolling through there, dude. Like the amount of Amazon containers is insane. <laughs> There's hundreds of them. So, so your point is true. I well, what I'm saying is you're you're correct. Josh, go ahead. I disagree. Because, you know, I honestly think that some some things that are being packaged in a container, like, you know, Nano, can huh? actually make sense. Okay. Because Nano is part of the GNU core utils. And on, like, say, your, your long-term release distributions, you know, like Debian Stable, Red Hat Linux, uh, Ubuntu's LTS, which Ubuntu LTS is a little weird because they backport things all the time. But... For, like, those distros, it actually does make sense for, like, Nano to be packaged up, up as, like, a Snap package. Because, you know, the Snap package, act, snaps, snaps in general actually have a fantastic support for a CLI environment compared to, like, Flatpak. Mm -hmm. uh, because snap, can, snap, depending on how it's packaged, can actually have permission to your root drive so you can run it with, like, sudo and be able to edit your configuration files and all that. But the majority of people that actually use tools like Nano or even Vim aren't working with like root privileges in like system-wide configuration files uh, they're just working on local files within the user's home directory and they might be developing program writing some notes or whatever wait hold on so i don't mean to okay i do mean to cut you off but i just want to ask is your point going to be that snap is like or you know some container formats can and are not that bad for cli programs and therefore because no, uh, my my point is that it shouldn't matter. And the reason why I'm using why I'm mentioning Nano specifically as like the snap package is because you know Nano doesn't update very often, but when it does, it's normally like a very big change. Like the last update pushed like a lot of configuration changes that people were really excited for. You know, like syntax highlighting. <laughs> but the uh, next change is coming in with like a built-in pull kit permissions that way you know you can save a file with and it will prompt you for root privileges because you forgot to call sudo with it and that's Wait, what they're working on, on the next one you know what i have just now realized what is happening right now what's that you think you're getting me we're on a clock here and you're you're trying to bait me into a subject <laughs> that we're gonna argue about for yeah, yeah 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 so, so so okay so i i want to i want okay, not to well, make anyway, it 
anyways, let's move on, guys, to, like, the main subject. Yes. Container... What... The true power containers and why they are kind of a must-have, right? So, I'm going to go ahead and start with the reason why Canonical created Snaps. Because Canonical was the very first one to make these universal packaging formats. And Snaps were the first. At the time, they were called Click Packages. They were they were made for the Ubuntu mobile operating system for their phones. Now, the reason why they came out was because the problem with Linux packaging is the... is actually a setback for application developers so say like i want to write a piece of software right and it's a graphical piece of software that you can just launch on your uh, desktop environment like let's just say that i'm a savage and i write a web browser and it's like the world's greatest web browser it it can render youtube videos with hardware acceleration out of the box no need to toggle any settings or anything and it is just wicked fast so i can post the code to github but in order for me to get that web browser into debian a Debian package, I have to either become a Debian package maintainer or a package maintainer has to pick it up. And then and then it'll go through the experimental branch, into the unstable branch, into the testing branch, into the stable branch. And who knows how long that's going to take. I think the average amount of time for a brand new pa- piece of software to make it into Debian stable is an average of about six to seven years. Let's just say that during that time, I, I package up this feature update. And I re- I pushed the release into GitHub. Well, that package I already had. There's now a version of my software that's in in Debian stable. So now I've got these people opening issues on my GitHub page saying that hey, there's a brand new release, but I don't have this feature. And I ask them, what operating system are you using? Oh, Debian stable. Well, that means. That then I have to explain to that person how Linux packaging works, even though I'm not the one maintaining that package, or potentially not that one. Now, that's going to happen for every single distribution that packages my software. That's going to be Debian, that's going to be Fedora, which is upstream from Red Hat. That's going to be like Arch Linux, which, you know, they're savages, and sometimes they just forget to update packages. Gen 2 developers and all that. And that's that's a general support issue that that I, as a developer, would have. Whereas I can release packages myself, but then I have to write uh, dev packages, which are secretly a pain in, pain in the butt if you've never written one before. RPM packages, which uh, use a spec file and everything, sim- similar enough to Arch Linux. Package builds for Arch Linux. Separate RPM packages for OpenSUSE, and, and so on. Now, or I can write a snap YAML manifest file, or a flat pack manifest. Or I can be a savage and compile it into an app image. And it just works everywhere, theoretically. That, yeah, that's, well, wh- that's why Canonical sponsored the creation of Snaps. And then because, you know, Snaps have like uh, their own set of issues, Red Hat came out and created flat, flat packs not too long after. And then a community response, response came out with app images. Those are the three universal packages that we have today. And then very recently, we've also had scripts that hook into uh, tools like Docker and Podman to be able to run applications out of dedicated containers. That would be like your distro box and uh, your toolbox. So yeah. that's generally what we're talking about today. Yeah. So thank you for making it long, Josh. But <laughs> I had to explain it because I guarantee you that there was going to be somebody sending an email going like, what the heck are you guys talking about? <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm not... I... So basically, containers are very powerful, but you have to uh, be very careful on which containers you are using and which uh, you want to deploy. If you want to deploy them on an actual server, do not use something that doesn't support HTTPS. But for me, I cannot live without them anymore. Thank you, Matt. But I, uh, I would recommend many. There are... I'm not going to recommend. I'm just going to say there's a lot of container managers from Portainer. If you are knowledgeable enough and like to do things like, like the advanced way, there's simpler ones like Casa OS, but Casa OS, no HTTPS. If you're like me, you don't care about HTTP or HTTPS, then use Casa OS. There's, there's a lot of them out there. But oh, when I discovered the amount of 
containers out there, I was like, they were more powerful than I ever thought they were. I was, I always thought that Matt was talking about the, the distro box was the only thing out there and Docker, basically what Cas OS is a front end for Docker, but distro box. Yeah, I know the use of installing containers via DistroBox is great because you can install whatever you want on your host system. Whereas in in something like CasOS, you you have to use your web browser to launch anything. Like for example, Matt installed Vivaldi from Arch from an Arch container because the one from OpenSUSE had issues. You cannot if you want to do it inside CasOS you're going to end up with Vivaldi inside Vivaldi or Vivaldi inside Firefox. You know you know what I mean? Because <laughs> you're running the container inside the browser. You don't have to use things like Casa OS or Fortana to manage. No, you, no, you, I'm not you, saying you have to. I'm just saying it's a good way to manage your well, container. But, I mean, you, you'd you solve your problem of a container inside of a container if you just ran the podman of whatever you're doing or run, run well, the Docker. Well, technically... The Technically, the way that the, the way that Casa OS and Portainer are working is that they're not is that the containers aren't actually running inside of those containers. What they are, what they're doing is they're hooking a Docker API that that's that's on your host system and tell and and telling Docker, hey, spin this container up or stop this container or re, restart it or rebuild it. That's really what they're doing. They're not actually running the containers inside the containers. All right. So here, here's what I have to say about con- containers overall. I think that where this stuff is really going to become like impressive is as more distros become immutable, you're going to find more and more uses for containers. Things like Distrobox, things like Toolbox, you know, even going more base level, things like Docker and Podman. And more and more applications are going to go that way. And we've seen that. Like you're going to use most distros have gone flat pack, but you're going to use flat packs and snaps. The question that i have for you guys just we still have 14 minutes and i just want to kind of talk about this for a little do you guys think that there's comes a time where the vast majority of software is only provided by containers so you won't be able to find a a aur package of whatever you will have to go to and get the containerized version of it no like never like never I actually say that yes, because there is already software packages where the official package is only provided as a container, such as, you know, bottles is only available as a flat pack. Yeah, but you can still get bottles and other formats. Yeah, well, you can, but, but you don't want to. You, well, <laughs> that, again, that's... well, isn't that the whole thing with the AUR in general? Now, you know, and then, what? well, there's also several AUR packages that I've seen off the top of my head, you know, like the Bitwarden package, where it's really just download the app image, extract the app image, throw it in slash opt. Yeah, yeah but well, I mean, app, image, app images are not secure. That's that's not even the problem at all. Like, that, that's... You're still... you're No matter what, if, like, let's say you're only releasing as a flat pack, download the flat pack, remove the cruft, install the package like it needs to be on the system, and boom. Like, that... That's already a thing with some packages as well that are just like you're saying released only officially as a flat pack or whatever. Now, do I think that there's going to be a rea- reality where down the line most people don't want to use anything other than containers because that's what is official 99% of the time? Yeah. And that that future is very very closely approaching. The reason why it I, will happen. Yeah, the reason why I asked this question was because when I made my DistroBox video, a few people got in there and said, like, this doesn't solve the problem of developers having to make packages for every distro. Um, thank you, Josh. Right. And, You're and my response was, I was like, I don't care. Like, I'm not a developer. That's not my problem to solve. Maybe a selfish bitch way of looking at it. True. But the reason why I like DistroBox is because I can go to another distribution and grab a package that I need and then have it work on my main machine. I don't have to worry about what base distro I'm using. I can just go get whatever package. That's the reason why I like DistroBox, the main reason why. But as I use it more and more often, I can, you know, find other uses for it. And and I have, but it doesn't 
DistroBox itself isn't the solution that we're talking about when it comes to what Josh was basically saying, right? one package have it available everywhere right that's not what distrobox is for it's for something different it's more of a, a development environment thing that's what you're really supposed to be using it for but the the point i'm trying to make is that we have two things that are kind of going on simultaneously we have the thing that josh is talking about where it's, it's more for developers to solve that problem of having twelve thousand different package formats and then you have well, go ahead as snaps, flat packs, and app images, just like any of the three or all of the three get more popular, the, the less tools like DistroBox are going to be like desired. I'm not going to say that they're ever going to be mandatory, but they will. But they they are currently desired because you know Arch Linux's AUR exists. Uh, same thing goes for like Nix, but uh, Nix is also a bit of a different beast in how it in how it's intended to work too. But it does fit into this containerized category as well. But uh, the the more that those formats uh, become become recognized and official, because you know by official I mean that you know KDE Discover and GNOME Software both have plugins for flat packs and snaps, and just like George Castro is saying in the chat, DistroBox is kind of just like a duct tape solution. No, it's not a duct tape solution because you're not you are not exposing anything. Are you sure about that? Yeah, because there's nothing to expose if your system is secure. You... Ha have you verified the container manifest just to see how open they are to the rest of your system? This Distrobox isn't meant to be. It, it, it's Distrobox itself. It... I know. I know what this is. I was about to write it in chat. They're trying to delay it. No, not there. Josh is trying to delay this. Hey, this stuff. We need to get to like you know giving out all the good links, getting to them thingies of the week so our boy Steve can go and we can hit a world record on record times here. And Josh is trying to make it not happen. I've come to the conclusion that I don't like being rushed, okay? <laughs> uh, like, if I wanted to be constrained to 40 minutes, I would have set that as a time limit. But as it's my podcast, screw you guys. We'll go as long as I feel like going. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, okay. No. Uh, you guys can go without me. I can just... Mm, uh, well, see if we if we'd known prior to the podcast, we could have started early. That's what we could have done. But no. or you know, Matt could have had the time. You to were uh, the you weren't even out. home. You weren't even home. I have my phone with me. <laughs> I could have rushed home. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, fine. We'll we'll just stop there and and talk about the thingies that we all hate. Or I'm fine that I hate. We, I mean, I saw that you got a new shirt. Yes. <laughs> Uh, if you want to join me in my hatred of Nuggies, you can check out the shop. There is a brand new I Hate Nuggies t-shirt, uh, and it's awesome. It's literally just a picture of the, of your logo with chicken nuggets underneath it. Indeed it is. Uh, so it means that you love Nuggies. It's very well designed, if you ask me. Anyways, you can check that out at shop.linuxcast.org, by the way. But Can't wait to get mine. The reason why we say that is because... We're moving on to the last part of the show, and due to peer pressure, we're talking about... Sorry, guys. Sorry. I really apologize, guys. I, it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's only this week. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> You're good, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, the, now that I've not been interrupted, um, I, I, had, I had a whole spiel, and then I, you guys decided to talk. It's fine. Don't, don't, it's don't, fine. don't worry about it's me. It's fine. So, uh, in the event you guys want to learn how to contact us... No, that's not where we're going yet. You're, you're not even doing it right. We're not there. To, we have a whole fucking section to do, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> nuggies I of, thought we did that before the Nuggies. No. no oh, are you his head. Are you used to that you just head. interrupt us mid-topic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you're so used to... Uh, anyways, Nuggies of the Week. That's what I, like. I had a spiel was gonna go into it, but it's great. It doesn't matter. Uh, Tyler, your nuggie of the week, please. Good lord. Uh, mine, mine. I did. I, I did a video kind of relating to it. The way bar. I I wanted to talk about when it comes to like good bars. I've been playing around with way bar and also polybar. Uh, I've been helping someone use polybar here recently those two because i think they're kind of interchangeable polybar if you're on x waybar you know 
if you're on Wayland. If you want really good bars and you're going Tyler Window Manager, it's a it's a great idea. Check them out. I I I really like them, and I also <laughs> am just going to go ahead and not put into chat. But I love how the Snuggy section has completely derailed us for a second. <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't have. I I just whatever. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, who's next? Steve, your nuggie of the week, please. My nuggie of uh, of the week is you go. Uh, you know host. You know host is exactly what I don't like, but I am. I selected it as a thing of the week because it does the containers. It seems more like an operating system than an. Than it's an operating system. That's. Containers. Let me explain. Let me explain. It's based on Debian. It's running Debian. But it has Unihost software on top, so when you install it, it runs Unihost the software. So uh, it's a it's a container manager, but as an OS, and it has its own reverse proxy enabled by default and everything, and en- en- Nginx or whatever you want to call it. So HTTPS is enabled. You can use it s- securely and safely, and you have access to the same exact containers, if not more. Then Casa OS and Linux server and all these combined. And their containers are more up to date than the Linux server because on the Linux server I found containers that haven't been updated in six years. So Unihost is a is a more professional way of managing containers. So think about Casa OS but but as an operating system with HTTPS support. It's amazing. I uh, I recommend it for those who really want to go above and beyond and have an actual server. Mine is not a server. Mine is just a desktop running zero Linux with Casa OS on top. But I mean, that's basically uh, what a server is too. Well, True. yeah, but you know what I mean. This is recommended for those really, really who want to go above and beyond. And if they have a computer to spare and set up as a server, go that route. And it even has uh, something that everybody is talking about these days, Netboot XYZ. So you can even set up Netboot XYZ. So it's if you think about it as Ventoy on a net via network. Instead of having USB, you have your ISOs via on a hard drive on a network. You can boot those ISOs, or you can boot from online images. Wait, well, I anyway. got confused. So w- what's the thingy of the week or nuggy of the week? It's nuggy of the know week host. is Unohost. You know host. You know host. Okay. Okay. All right, Josh, your thingy of the week, or your nuggy of the week, please. Uh, my nuggy of the week has to deal with news from yesterday because uh, Linux kernel 6.6 breached LTS, which means that drivers for this is actually going to be native in the Linux kernel, which means that I can finally recommend Intel Arc GPUs for, for the masses as soon as, you know, uh, distros start shipping the new LTS kernel. Yay. All right. So, but yeah, uh, you, thought, you thought AMD cards had amazing driver support on the Linux? You haven't seen Intel yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll you just have it. <laughs> wait five years until they're actually, you know, prevalent. All right. So uh, my thingy of the week is Yazi, Y-A-Z-I. It is a terminal file manager, and it is very speedy. So it's basically Ranger, but not written in Python, and it just works really, really well. Unfortunately, it's not in a lot of repositories, so you'll either have to build it or do what I did and download it from DistroBox and export it to your machine that way. It works fantastically well. It's really good. It has image support built in just like Ranger and stuff like that. So uh, it's... I'm still messing around with the configuration files, so I can't t- I can't really tell you if the configuration files is better or worse. Yeah, I'm still kind of getting my head around it, but overall it's been a, it's been pretty good. So that's my nuggy of the week. So that is it for this lightning round of a of a podcast. Are we sorry that we kind of rushed it? But uh, I didn't know we were going to do that. Otherwise, we I would have been more prepared. But anyways, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so in any number of ways. The probably the best way is head on over to the website. That's linuxcast.org. There you'll find previous episodes all the way back to season one and i know the most recent episodes haven't been put up there i'm still working on changing some things up that that will get solved hopefully this week Uh, you can also find previous blog posts that i've posted there as well you can follow josh on uh, find all of his contact information by heading on over to tenleyj.com slash contact Uh, steve is on mastodon he's at fossadon.org slash 
zero Linux, right? I think I'm doing this from memory. Zero with an X, not with a Z. Tyler has a YouTube channel where he's actually been posting videos and live streaming. Like he actually knows what he's doing. It's really freaking me out. Like go back to whatever it was you're doing before because you weren't supposed to be do this whole YouTube thing. Uh, like it, it's just something I have to get used to again because he used to make videos and then he forgot his password for a while and now he's back anyways. YouTube.com slash ZanyOG is where you'll find that. Head on over to his channel and make sure you give him a subscribe. He's getting really close to like 5,000 subscribers. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, so uh, everybody who's watching, listening, head over to his channel. See if we can't get him to 5,000 subscribers. That'd be awesome. Uh, anyways, you can also... You can, if you want to help me get to 40,000 subscribers, hit that subscribe button just below or head on over to youtube.com slash Linuxcast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast. I'm on Kofi. Also, again, the the, the merch store, shop.linuxcast.org. There's Nuggy t-shirts. There's things that are they have nothing to do with Nuggies. All of that stuff goes directly to support, support the show. Yes, there's a pillow. There's desk mats. There's hoodies. There's t-shirts. All that stuff shop.linuxcast.org is where you'll find all of that. We record this live every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. We're normally not people who actually get done in an hour, so don't think that this is a this is a fluke, by the way. Anyways, watch us live, youtube.com slash linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you. The channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now, so thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time, next week. Uh, actually, no, hold on a second. We're not here next week. We're off next week. So in two weeks, we'll be back. And that'll be Tyler's topic. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.